Hey friends, we are going to learn all about WSL, the Windows subsystem for Linux, here live at Build 2019. This is one of my most favorite things. My next guests are here to tell us all about this and more. Be sure to tweet your questions at us and we'll answer them to the best of our ability using the hashtag MSBuild or from the link below, <laughs> here, there. Ah, look at that. Got a bunch of folks here to talk to us right now. We've got Ben, Craig, and Jack. Um, in the interest of time, I'm going to start with Jack because you told me that you were in a group that I've never heard of. It's like a mysterious MI6 kind of a thing. What group are you with, sir? Yeah, so uh, my name is Jack. Uh, like you mentioned, I'm a program manager for the Linux Systems Group. And that's a relatively new group within Microsoft that's sort of consolidating a lot of the Linux efforts across Microsoft. So uh, that, that's things from making Linux work really well within Azure by you know, committing, committing source upstream into the Linux kernel that's then brought down into distributions that are then put into the Azure marketplace. Uh, so that, that enables you to use new features like advanced networking features and interesting drive scenarios and GPUs within Azure all supported in Linux. So that's, that's one piece of what the Linux Systems Group does. The other piece, the reason that I'm sitting up here with you today, is that uh, we build uh, kernels for internal uh, projects. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk more about that. But in the, in the context of WSL, um, that's, that's producing a Linux kernel that underpins the new uh, subsystem for Linux version 2. Not to put too fine a point on it, because we don't need to go and talk about it. It's 2019 now in Windows and Microsoft. Microsoft loves Linux. But yes. it's amazing that there are people who have on their resume both works at Microsoft and commits to the Linux <laughs> kernel. I mean, that's just kind of cool. <laughs> so it's worth pointing out that that's pretty It's that's a fun pretty intersection, awesome. yeah. So Craig, where do, where do you, what group are you in and not the Linux subsystem? Not Linux subsystem, but I work on the Windows subsystem for Linux. The Windows I'm, subsystem for Linux. Yep, and I'm a program manager on it. OK. And Ben. That's a beautiful beard you've got there. <laughs> Thank you very much, Scott. Well, I like your. Sure, well. I tried and it failed, but it's all right. <laughs> so you're a dev. I am. I'm a developer on uh, Windows Subsystem for Linux. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the pleasure of speaking with you in Build 2016 when yeah. we were announced, and and we're keep on keeping on. And so when Build, uh, when we announced WSL at Build, and it was like you know the, the, it's the it's happening. Linux on the desktop is happening, except it's on the Windows desktop. It was amazing, and I could go out to DOS, but not DOS type bash, and then I was in a real world. I, I was right. really running Linux. I was running Top, I was running apt-get, I was running Ubuntu, I was running CentOS, I was doing all kinds of stuff. It, it, blew, it blew people's minds. And right. it, it, I think it personally ushered in a, a new excitement around the power of the command line and also the power of a hybrid solution. Right. I feel really cool having Linux on one side and one window and VS Code off to the side and putting together these kind of, these kind of solutions. Right. But it, is it fair to say that there were things that WSL I guess we'll call it now WSL1, mm -hmm. didn't do amazingly well. Right. So, so one of the downsides of, of, of the approach of WSL1 was that the, the kernel implementation was, uh, it was written by us in Microsoft, um, and it was, uh, it, it was partially incomplete, right? So we had to develop this internally. It was, a, it was, it was uh, not able to use you know, the Linux source itself, so these things had to be re-implemented. And as you, can, you probably can guess, the Linux kernel has a really wide ABI surface, and it was very difficult to, to you know, hit all of those checkboxes to make sure every you know, application works. Right. So that's one downside. Um, the other downside was that with uh, some of these translations that we would do between uh, and Windows system calls would be slow. For example, file systems, uh, we, we get uh, some, some points that file system speed is slow on WSL. Uh, that was one of the primary reasons. Right. Um, yeah. That was the thing that bothered me the most. I mean, the thing that was amazing about it was that you've got the user mode, the elf binaries right. of Linux, sitting on top of a, uh, a thunking layer, for lack of a better mm -hmm. word. And when someone wanted to make a syscall and say, hey, open a file, there was no Linux kernel there. So you'd right. say, hey, open a file. And then you would call the Windows kernel and say, hey, can you do this on my behalf? Exactly. Yeah. And there was this layer of indirection as you thunked your way down. Right. And you know, there's a cost for that. And exactly. you've also got the, win the Linux file system sitting on top of the Windows file system. So there's right, a bit of yeah. a price there as well. Definitely. But then you said, Jack, that you are working in a group that facilitates Linux being awesome everywhere in the company. And you said that we're producing a kernel? Yeah, so uh, Microsoft has actually been contributing to Linux for years now. Um, and the recent consolidation of those resources within the company into the Linux systems group is sort of what enabled us to go ahead and and produce the kernel that's used in WSL2. Um, but we have a, a huge amount of Linux know-how in-house. Um, we some of the, the primary maintainers of the Linux kernel, you know, work, work on my team or on, on teams that are close to mine. So 
Yeah, we, absolutely. Linux is, is now built into Microsoft and the, and the culture of, of sort of what we're doing there. Now, I don't know if these are third rail questions, but I wanted to understand why, why can't you just pick up a kernel lying around and ship that one? Yeah, so what we did for WSL is we, we locked into what's called the long-term stable branch, or a long-term stable release of the Linux kernel. So uh, as you can imagine, the code uh, for the Linux kernel is constantly changing, and releases are snapped and established as stable at different points in time. So we, we picked the latest stable version. Um, and then as, as uh, WSL matures and we move forward and, and new code is added upstream to Linux and new LTS versions are snapped, we'll upgrade the kernel within WSL uh, to, the, to those new versions. OK. And now certainly, uh, Craig, if I'm going to put this on my machine, I could just <laughs> fire up a VM, right? I mean, it would take a couple of minutes, several, or maybe several minutes, depending. I could fire up a Hyper-V VM, minimize it, you know, shush into it. I'm trying to make that a thing, by the way. <laughs> kind of thing? No, please, no. no. It's going to be a thing. Everyone's going <laughs> to just shush into their machine. Um, so because SSH into the machine, that's no fun. So you shush into the machine locally, and it's, it feels heavy. It moves slow. Like, I don't really want to like, turn my machine off or like, sub, like, um, stand by it if I've got a VM in the background. Right. I, I, I want it to be there when it's there and not there when it's there. So there's integrations with Windows that need to be really tight. Yeah, so WSL is not a traditional VM experience. Mm. When, uh, what you said about VMs, it's slow to boot up. It's totally isolated. It's system he resource heavy. Uh, WSL2 is fast to boot up. You get access to a bash shell in about a second. Um, in about it, a what? In a second. One second to go. To it boots up in a second. Yeah. In, in a second. Yep, that's right. So a lot of the technology is actually um, Azure technology that helped um, make it possible. But the cloud's not involved. I can do this in airplane mode, right? No. This is but it's not magic the power that you brought from the cloud. To the people, <laughs> right? Yes, we brought it down. And it's really useful for client scenarios. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, completely integrated with Windows. So you can access your Linux files from Windows, your Windows files from Linux. Um, and you can run all of those on either or and run full Linux applications directly on your Windows machine. The thing that I thought was the most impressive of it is I was at the command line. And actually, can we, can we do it? Are we allowed to? Can we put something up on the screen here? Is this cool? Go ahead and throw me up on the screen if you can. And uh, I've got it on this, on this laptop here. Let's see if we can pull that off. I'm pretty sure that we have. Yep. Are you seeing me on the big screen there? There we go. Let's do this. I'm going to go. Uh, 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 uh. Da, 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 da. Look at that. This is DOS, but not DOS, because it's not really DOS, right? If you look over here, I'm using the Windows terminal, and I've got DOS, but not. But I've got Ubuntu right okay. here, OK? And if I go out to Ubuntu, and um, I say explorer.exe dot, mm -hmm. yep. that's a Windows executable. Right. But this is Linux, and it cannot run that, right? Mm. So I'm assuming. I'm guessing here. I don't know anything. Okay. You are saying, hey, run this. And then Linux at some point is like, uh, no. And right. you catch them <laughs> and do something. And then magic happens. And then Explorer runs anyway. Right. right. So this, this utilizes a feature of, of, of Linux called uh, bin format, miscellaneous or bin format. Um, you're able to register uh, uh, binary formats with the Linux kernel that can be handled by user mode. Um, it's a really cool feature of the Linux kernel. And we it's almost that. like they waited for us to need that feature. <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it was certainly helpful to make this work, yeah. <laughs> and it works very well with, uh, with WSL2 as well, where we don't even have to make any changes to the kernel at all for this to just work. Really? Yeah. That's like when you, have a, you can register, like a v Visual Studio Code is registered code colon slash slash right. as a protocol handler that's kind of not really a protocol handler. So it's a last chance to do something. Exactly. It's and very you kind similar. of set the similar kind of thing up. Here. So I said explorer.exe. And suddenly I'm looking at my, my file system, my Ubuntu file system. Now here's the thing. WSL has been around for a couple of years. And you have been telling me for years, don't mess with these files. Right. Rich Turner has been telling you for years. <laughs> and, now, and now you've made it really easy for me to mess yeah. with these files. So. Yeah. So that was, that was another criticism of, of, of WSL was that, oh, my Linux files are in this you know, really hard to find directory. And even if, if I do find them, if I edit them, I can you know, I'll oh, delete my metadata. That's the first metadata. thing we did is we went right. digging to find out, where are these files? Exactly. I want my files. So now this, this, is, uh, this feature is not exclusive to WSL2. This will be available in uh, the release of Windows that's coming out this month. Uh, you'll be able to see your entire Linux file system from uh, Explorer via a path like, like that one on the screen. So, well, and, and speaking to the uh, to the Linux file system, we talked a little bit before uh, Jack about how there were some perf issues here, but now we have a real kernel. The speed here is 5x, 
10x, depending on what you're doing. I used to go and run npm install and then just go home. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now it's fast. And right, it, I'm not trying to overstate this. It's, it's fast. very fast. Uh, in, in most scenarios, as long as you're in the Linux file system, uh, you'll have near native performance for, uh, for a lot of stuff. So yeah, we were seeing uh, some, some npm installs earlier going like 10 or 15 times faster uh, than, than you would have seen on WSL1. So it's, it's much snappier. Uh, and it'll be great for doing things that, that weren't great in WSL1, like doing large builds, uh, you know, managing databases, things like this. So right. uh, it's, it's a it's great improvement in that, in that way. There was a, a gentleman named Sam Saffron who works on uh, Discourse, which is a Rails application. And it's not just any Rails application. It's a sophisticated Rails application. And Rail, Ruby and Rails are, not, are, are kind of not well known for being awesome on Windows. It's just challenges. Right. And so I really wanted a Linux environment. And he's like, well, go ahead and fire this up. And I'm thinking to myself, well, what's required? What do I need? And he's like, well, here's a, here's a list of all the kind of stuff that you need. You need Redis. You need Postgres. You need this. You need that. And everything. So I did it. I just worked. I literally went to the beginner's guide to installing Discourse on Ubuntu, and it worked. Right. And it was fast. I tried to do it on <laughs> WSL1. Not only did it take almost a half an hour, I actually hit a block where I couldn't go any further mm. because there was right. a syscall, right. a systems call that was missing. Right. So I was trying to do this cool like side-by-side -side, right. uh, benchmark, and it is infinitely better. That, that's yeah. the great thing about having a full Linux kernel there, is that yeah. that entire system call interface is built out now. So in, in WSL1, you know, Ben and, and a lot of other developers were sort of artisanally crafting these system calls in the emulation <laughs> layer uh, without crafting. access to the Linux kernel source. Uh, so with WSL2, you know, we expect uh, a much better compatibility for a wide variety of applications, including Docker, Kubernetes, uh, S trace, things like that. Right. Docker is an interesting point because I'm very used to running Docker for Windows in Windows. It fires up a virtual machine of its own, and then I can go and talk to it from there. And then, in order to get Docker for Windows to work with WSL1, you're tunneling out and back into the universe and then down and around. Can I just run Docker now? Yeah. Yes. But where is it running in? It runs totally in the Linux environment. So it's the exact Linux version of Docker uh, running on exactly a virtualized Linux machine. Seriously. Yeah. Now, what about memory management? Did I have like a text file somewhere where I say only 100 megs? Because what if I want to run Kubernetes? What if I want to use lots of memory? What if I want to use all the memory? Yeah, so currently it's, uh, we, we give you most of the memory that available on the host right. You got to have room for Windows. We got we to gotta leave a little room for Windows, yeah, but, but you have as much memory, similar to WSL1, right? Hmm. It's, we don't, it's not segmented. You have access to the, to the full host. Because if you want to build a big project, you don't want it to be artificially slow just because you know, you, you're not able to get as much memory as you need. So. Mm -hmm. Now, I wrote a little uh, batch file. Let's go ahead and switch over to my screen here real quick. And I wrote a little batch file that I'm feeling pretty good about. It says WSL-T oh, and okay. Ubuntu. It, it's, a, it's, an, it's a switch for WSL that basically shuts down the system. Right. It's not really necessary, but one of the things that I wanted to basically do was to have that so that I could see how fast it started up. OK. So I'm here in uh, DOS, but not DOS, and I go and say Ubuntu 1, 1000. OK. There we go. Was that, was I, that fake? <laughs> I'm thinking you need to yeah. add a sleep so, to make it feel like <laughs> something's happening. We, we could. If, if you want to see you know, the, the proof is in the pudding, if you type dmessage, de you may have to type sudo dmessage if you're sudo not running as root. Sudo dmessage. Yeah. OK. Uh, and then, it's a and secret. Then everybody knows look, that's password now. D M oh, D M S G M S G. Sorry, yeah, there you go. I spell it wrong. M E S G. Oh, you actually want me to write mess, mess? No, no, no. Yeah, like that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Ah! If you scroll up, up, uh, the timestamps are a little odd, like kind of hard to read, but okay. um, you'll see. Yeah, that's it, it's that's everything. That oh, like that's how long it's been around. Out. Like, if you go near the bottom, you'll see some timestamps that'll say like about you know a second. Oh, and look, max dynamic memory size, basically how much I have. Yeah. So that's pretty slick. So I'm really enjoying that. And then we'll go back over here to dosba.nos, and I'm going to type WSL dash dash list. What's going on here? So that's enumerating all of the uh, Linux distributions that you have installed with WSL. Looks like you have three. Uh, yeah. You, you have. I've got, oops. I was trying to be tricky with my zoom it tool there. There you go. Yeah. That's the one I installed. That's 16.04. That's when I converted. Right. So you'll be able to take your existing, like a lot of people have their WSLs just the way they like them. Mm -hmm. I can convert it to WSL2. Right. Yeah. And you can also run them side by side. So you can see that some of them 
Uh, some of the distros that you have are WSL1 backed distros. Oh, okay. And you can also have WSL2 backed distros, convert them back and forth anytime you like. That's cool. Yeah. So I can, yeah, well, there, that, which one is this? If I say that, that'll be the top one. So this is WSL1. So right. I just ran the default. Right. Right. Very and then cool. you can upgrade it to WSL2 and back anytime you like. So here's the real question. When do they get it? So this will be available to, uh, in the Windows Insider Fast Ring next month. And then after that, we're, we're going to evaluate you know, the feedback that we get from our users. We really want to you know, release something that people are going to really be happy with. And uh, you know, based on our feedback, this fall or, this, or next spring. This is really a like, big deal. Like, I, I know you're understated people, but I hope that you feel the excitement and the enthusiasm around this. It's been very fun. It's on. really cool. I mean, yeah. it's happening. Do you realize that? It's, it's the year of happening. Linux on the desktop. I'm telling you. 2019. Yeah, I, oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> I'm learning so much right now. Uh, we are going to take a quick break, but do stay with us for the Windows Terminal. We're going to learn all about that coming up next.